Hi everybody, it's Eric and welcome to the video conversation. Of course, we just started the school year and I just had my daughter sent off to school as well and I want to wish all the teachers, the students, the administrators, and of course the parents a wonderful upcoming school year. One of the things I enjoy most is visiting classrooms. I've been to about 213 or 14 different classrooms now. Everyone is unique and a great experience and I look forward to continuing to visit with classrooms upcoming. Also in Washington uh, this last week, we just uh, had a chance to honor the 15th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, and remembering that we will never forget the first responders and the activities from 9-11 were all members of the house gathered on the east uh, front steps uh, for the anniversary of 9-11. Now we're going to get to the questions and actually the first is an email. It comes in from Molly in Eden Prairie and she writes in, Dear Congressman Paulson, I believe that the impact of a quality education is clear, brighter futures, healthier communities, and increased economic growth for individuals and countries. Through my own educational opportunities, I have seen the impact that education has on bringing excitement and curiosity to a child's life. I hope that you will support the Bipartisan Education for All Act to help all children experience the power of education. Thank you sincerely, Molly. Actually, Molly, thanks for sharing your thoughts on education. In America, of course, we know that education does lead to a bright future, and it's part of why we have so much innovation happening here. But, if, but for a lot of uh, students or young people, almost 60 million around the world, education has been a less attainable opportunity. And so one of the initiatives that we did pass this week with bipartisan support that I supported is the Education for All Act that will make also education a key component of our foreign aid process, which is very, uh, very good opportunity. Next up is a phone call actually that comes in from Joy Anasio, who called in asking me to support the Survivors Bill of Rights Act, which was scheduled to come to the floor earlier this week as well for a vote. Um, I want to thank you for letting me know of your uh, support for that initiative, Joy. Just so folks know, I think it is critical that we make sure that victims of sexual assault have access to the resources and the services they need so they can move forward with their lives. And the Survivors uh, uh, Bill of Rights that did pass with overwhelming unanimous bipartisan support. Very important vote will ensure three things. Number one, it'll ensure that the victims are going to have access to forensic examination at no cost, that their medical kit will also be retained and held onto for 20 years, and then finally, that they're informed of any potential DNA matches that may occur or if their kit is going to be destroyed. And the other opportunity too is that a part of the legislation initiative will have a working group looking at best practices that will also focus more additional time, energy, and attention to uh, making sure that victims, uh, assault uh, victims are treated better and looking at how we can have the uh, forensic evidence preserved. I want to thank everyone for joining this week. Uh, continue to reach out with your thoughts, your questions, your ideas at paulson.house.gov.